In the late 1800s, demand for water in Nottinghamshire was growing and growing every year. So work on a chosen site began in 1881 at Papplewick when a pilot well was sunk to prove the water extraction capacity of the proposed pumping station. And as construction progressed, Papplewick was supplied with two 140 horsepower James Watt & Co rotative beam engines. Papplewick station began its life pumping on the 18th of September 1884 from the 200 foot deep wells and run almost continuously until the station was electrified in 1969. Hey everybody and welcome to Papplewick in Nottinghamshire. I've come to have a look at the former pumping station, the steam and boiler house situated just over there. But the main feature of what we're gonna look at today is the covered reservoir. Now this covered reservoir was completed by 1880, but it only lasted until 1906 because a huge crack appeared in one of the walls and it had to be taken out of use after that day. It was probably due to mining subsidence. So I'm gonna take you through a little walk around. We're gonna go inside the steam and pump boiler house. Uh, that is all operational today. It's not, I've come on a quiet today to do the external stuff. We'll have a little look around and then I'll take you up and we'll have a look into the reservoir. Now the reservoir, not really gonna be saying much inside there because there's a lot of reverberation and it was really, really difficult. But I'll voice over at times and we'll have a nice bit of soundtrack too. Also to look forward to, we've got the 120 foot high chimney. And that is absolutely a dominant feature of this site. Absolutely beautiful. So a little look at Google Maps showing you directly above where the site of the Papawit pumping station is. That's Rig Lane, the road going from top to bottom. The body of water is the lake on site and the main engine house is just here. If we jump back to this map from 1899, it's very, very basic around there, isn't it? It's just fields surrounding what is such a beautiful building. You can still make out the lake a little bit better, can't you? The profile of the water just there and the main buildings of the shaded, shadowed area on the left-hand side. Look at this Weybridge, isn't it? 1945 Pooley, the old hut at the side. You just make out the chimney peering around. So behind me is a set of stairs, some stone, beautiful stairs, which leads up to a beautiful brown door. You see that just there. And behind that door, there is some amazing historical Victorian equipment, all the pumping gear. This is the pumping and steam house. And a few weekends a year, you can go in here and it is all running just the way it used to be when it was fully operational. I'm gonna take you back a couple of weeks and give you a little walk around inside. Just enjoy the sounds that everything makes inside here.
But that was absolutely amazing, wasn't it? I'd like to go in there again one day. It's definitely worth a visit just on a bank holiday weekend to see all that. I didn't speak in there because there was a lot of people, a lot of sound reverberation, and I wanted you to hear the sounds of what was going on in there. Now I'm walking up towards the chimney now. I believe it's dated 1884, 120 feet in height. Let's get a little bit closer to it. Look at this old air vessel just here. I believe it was used to um, smooth out fluctuations in the water being pumped through. So it's right next to the chimney. Look at that. Excuse the glare. 120 feet. Over here as well. Look at those. Like you used to see on the roadside. Now I grew up right close to Stanton Ironworks in Derbyshire. I can hear the clanking and the grinding, the clunking and all the smoke, the industrial site when I was growing up. Now around here, we've got this lot and I'm going to read this, it's the Stanton Iron Works triple expansion engine. And it was manufactured in 1897. Put that for a little piece of history. Look at the wheel down there and all the gear. The Glenfield Company Limited in Kilmarnock Hydraulic Engineering. And here it is around the other side, a huge piece of kit, isn't it? Well preserved and looked after. And that is right outside the engine winding house. I think it's now time to go and have a look at this reservoir, completed in 1879 by Mr. Hawksley, capable of storing 1.5 million gallons of water that are out of use since 1906. There is a current reservoir up there which came along way after 1957. I can't wait to go and look at this. And the water, there may still be a little bit in there, and I believe during storage, because it was pumped up from Bunter Sandstone, it was kept cool and clear. So onto the reservoir. So this is what it looks like in 1899. You can see there's a track and a load of woodlands at the top and that square outline is the covered reservoir and the opening is in the very top, how it is today. Jump forward to what it looks like today and it's, you can barely see it, can you? It's a load of trees and bushes, but what has appeared on the right hand side is the more modern and current covered reservoir operated by Seven Trent Water. If we zoom out further still, you can see where both areas are occupied. The reservoir on the left hand side and Papawick pumping station is on the right. I do find curious in the center what that little circular area is just there, whether that's related to the farm or related to the pumping station and anything that's happening on the ground. I'm unsure, there does seem to be a mark on there when we jump back to the 1899 map, you can see it in exactly the same place. So it has been there for quite some time.
So as we descend down the stone steps into the dark abyss laying below. Now we're in the central point of this cupboard reservoir which I mentioned on the maps earlier on. And as we get lower down the colder it gets. It's absolutely freezing down there compared to what it is like above ground. But it is pleasantly lit up down there. You can see there are floodlights in all manner of positions but also you can see from these photographs that there is also still a fair bit of water on the ground. But that added to it, that added to the experience and reminded you of what was actually down here. Now just through this archway laid something very very interesting indeed. This is the inlet pipe for the water where it would have come in, it had been pumped in and allowed to be stored inside the covered reservoir. At the beginning of the video I mentioned where cracks had formed which caused the closure of this reservoir and quite cleverly they've managed to light up one of these cracks with LED lighting and you can see it going from top to bottom. This is a genuine actual crack which formed and they've very cleverly put this lighting inside. So as we leave the reservoir and head back to the main pumping station area I'd like to thank you for watching this video and I do recommend that you go and visit this Papawit pumping station. It's an absolutely beautiful place for history. I'll put the website in the description. And also, if you go on a bank holiday or a weekend with an event on, that is when the reservoir is also open. It's fully recommended. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.